Okay. Yeah, so today, I mean, I would like to start the Synapse Analytics workspace related uh, details. So I, I think already in the beginning of the uh, classes, like I just gave you some introduction and what things are inside Azure Synapse. Uh, we are going to dig deep into the details as well as we are going to do some exercises on top of that. So yeah, so Azure Synapse Analytics as Microsoft claimed, it's an integrated analytical platform which combines data warehousing, big data analytics, data integration, and visualization into single environment. So data warehousing, I think we already created dedicated SQL pool in the initial days. That was outside the Synapse, but inside the Synapse also, we can create the dedicated SQL pool. And in case if you don't want to go with the dedicated SQL pool, you just want to go with pay as you go. Like if you are using it, you will pay if you are not using you don't want to pay so if you want to save some money and also some time on administration then you can go with serverless sql pool and uh, spark pools yes in case if you are doing any kind of data analytics apache spark pools will cover that part and uh, data integration synapse pipelines i think we have been doing that visualization yes power bi is also part of it right all these things together come under uh azure synapse analytics like and also like uh, i i saw in some article that they were they also trying to integrate azure stream analytics into the synapse analytics so that everything works and is an end to end solution both for batch as well as stream what next yeah so i mean this is what i have seen in the microsoft documentation so we we kind we have four kind of data analytics descriptive diagnostic predictive and prescriptive just trying to tell like uh, why these many tools are there so what happened that means already so far until yesterday what has happened to the organization right so in in case if we have to answer that question then we have to read the existing information right so that means we have to analyze this existing information which is history so that is where data warehouse comes into picture in synapse it is replicated using dedicated sql pool so why did it happen so that means let's say an analyst who is creating a power bi report they always try to replicate what is there whether it is a loss or a profit or is it is this is it sustaining with a common grow i mean uh, same growth level or is it like uh, completely declining with the losses forever right so all those things as an update they will visualize in the report it could be a presentation it could be an excel or it could be a power bi or a tableau reporting tool right so once they provide some visualization then there might be a questions from these upper management or someone who is part of the existing team like why it happened that means okay there is a dip or a sudden fall in the profits for an organization or maybe it could be sales so why that particular week it happened or why in that particular region it happened or why in that particular area it happened so all those things we so if someone wants to find out then they may need more time and more data to dig into the details for that people have created serverless sql pool the idea behind serverless sql pool is for example you are getting lot billions of records every day and you may not need individual transactional data to create a report you may need some aggregated results and you want to store that aggregated results into dedicated sql pool but the individual transactional data may be still staying in the something like a blob storage or a data lake storage which is a massive amount of data if someone wants to do mining then they have to do on the such huge amount of data and imagine like if you want to access that huge amount of data from dedicated sql pool that means you are killing the resources because it is meant for the reporting purpose so that is when serverless comes into picture so irrespective of how much data you're dealing with serverless has the capability to provide you the help required to analyze the data right and using sql language only right 
so in case if you are good in sql and you want to continue with sql but still you want to work with massive amount of data no matter what size of what is the size of data serverless sql pool will help and as soon as your analysis is done you don't need to pay any extra money but in case if you want to do perform the same activity using dedicated sql then you may need to increase the data warehouse units obviously it is going to cost you more because you are going to increase and once you are done you might need to decrease all that unnecessary additional activity will come into picture so that is why we recommend serverless sql pool in case if you are handling large amounts of data right and you can store the day final aggregated results into dedicated sql pool so that others can use that is where dedicated sql pool acts as a warehouse and of course so this is all about history what happens tomorrow which is like future so that is called prediction and for predictive analytics we have so many machine learning algorithms and the data science algorithm models so all those things can be done using the apache spark pools right so based upon the prediction people wants to take some actions so that they can maintain the sustainable growth for the organization so that is where apache spark pool comes into picture so it involves so many data science models as well as machine learning algorithms so someone who is acting as like a data scientist that is where things will come into picture right okay so prescriptive what do you mean by that okay someone as a data analyst already provided what happened until yesterday and someone as a data scientist already provided what could happen from tomorrow in future right so then a person who is sitting on the uh, management side will look at both the things and how they look at it um, by looking at some numbers some random number generated by all these machine learning algorithms or the sql code may not help him he needs to see through some visualizations like graphs right bar graph trend lines all this stuff so that is when power bi comes into picture so when people project all these values or the numbers that they we have got from above three statements then they will have a uh, look at them through visualizations and they will decide what to do for today versus what to do from tomorrow that is where prescriptive analytics comes into picture which is typically happens through some visualization to in this case microsoft in house tool power bi comes into picture right so i mean the idea that i am trying to explain here is this is how the questions may come people may not say like what is what is the tool that is used for descriptive analytics so the scenarios may be given like okay someone in, in the organization wants to do some descriptive analytics or they want to predict something for future what tool you recommend is it like uh, synapse will be sufficient or is it stream analytics will be sufficient etc so that is why i just reiterated what we already discussed yeah so this is what microsoft gave like what languages it supports right what things it we can maintain so diagram itself is self explanatory i'm not going to talk much about it because some of the things are already covered part of data bricks which is something similar to here right yeah so at the end of the day everything runs through data lake storage in the under background storage underlying is data lake storage that that is by default in case if you want to bring some external storage like cosmos db or azure sql db or some other third party tool depending upon the limitations we may either directly copy from data from there or you may need to stage the data through in, inside the data lake so that you can perform the necessary actions right and these are the languages supported databricks supports only four languages typically sql python scala and r but uh, synapse they have added dot net as well right scala there is no much difference between java and scala so if people are good with scala then they should be able to do some things on java as well but dot net is something that microsoft added in the azure synapse analytical studio in case if you are a dot net developer right okay so this is the ui uh, yeah this is where i would like to spend some time so i think we have discussed about the same diagram when we are you talking about databricks 
yes databricks as a single tool can do all these stuff but what synapse what microsoft is climbing is synapse can also do everything as a whole you don't need to go with uh, any other tool if you are entering to the microsoft azure cloud platform no in the recent world or in current world if you are entering i microsoft azure you don't need any other tool everything can be handled by synapse analytical workspace itself so you can use the pipelines for orchestration and you can use the serverless sql or dedicated sql for the storage and serving and you have the azure data lake storage gen 2 for the backend storage of course power bi is part of the visualization you don't need to create or you don't need to buy another reporting tool for that that is what they're trying to say or you may live with the existing tools in case if you already entered into a cloud long back and you are using some of the external tools like data factory or data bricks then yes synapse will work in congestion with them the idea is like okay so if you are using data factory for orchestration microsoft is claiming that okay we can help you to easily migrate those data factory pipelines into synapse using some migration tool or if you still want to continue with that maybe the new pipelines can be developed in synapse and existing will still continue and the end data will be stored in the dedicated sql pool or serverless sql pool that is what they are trying to claim okay so this is something like in case if you want to build a hybrid platform yeah i think yes this is all about big data what is volume of the data what is variety of the data right so these are the four formats of data that is supported by synapse csv parquet orc and json right so by default these four are the things that are covered uh, yeah there you go so this is what i mean i think i already show gave a glimpse on data lakes to uh, modeling uh, while i was discussing about databricks so synapse also that means microsoft also also came up with the similar model where they are also going to use the gen2 file system for creating the data lake zones right so just like just like databricks so bronze contains raw data silver contains some clean prepared data gold contains the uh, aggregated results maybe that is that can be used for the power bi reporting so since these topics are already covered not from going with much glimpse yeah data flows i think you guys have already seen it so part of synapse uh, microsoft support data flows as well just like how we do in data factory and yes dedicated sql pool yes this is the something that we haven't discussed much earlier we only discussed that it can be used as a synapse warehouse but how we load the data what are the methods involved all those things we can cover today uh, okay so if i go back to the presentation yeah so here what we need to understand here is dedicated sql pool which is nothing but common terminology synapse warehouse so it covers four different different tables one is a standard physical table which we already know as a SQL developer, create table, table name and the column definition, etc. And temporary tables, yes, Synapse Warehouse also supports temporary tables or hash tables. Those who are a SQL server developers, they know what is meant by temporary table. Okay, so that's all typical uh, SQL server developers topics, right? So we know physical table and we know temporary tables. Yeah, what else? external tables distributed tables partition tables i think some of you might have got any chance to create partition tables in typical on-premise sql server also we have a concept called partition tables where we create partitions based on the one particular column one such example is in case if you are receiving sales information for each and every store in us for each and every day right so is a store that is located in washington dc uh, near to white house is selling my product it could be a chocolate or it could be toothpaste or anything right so for a manufacturing company what is the total number of sales what is the total number of chocolates for example hershey's right it's a famous chocolate selling or manufacturing company 
so for them sales will be like okay the store is located some somewhere near to white house and so on so street and it is selling my chocolate so on so product and 10 is the quantity of the sales of that product on that day from that store so imagine like if if the store is selling each and every day throughout the year and Hershey's has a lot of products then the volume of data will be huge and if Hershey's people wants to use the data for the last three years or five years depending upon the analytics they want to do then even though we have 10 years of history that may not be really required so one such thing what they can do is they can partition the sales information by year because they are using last three years or five years then what will happen is so they can separate it out the rest of the data and archive it that is one simple thing to do or what they can do is they can create partitions by year and so that that table that is inside the sql server can load the data into the respective partition for example, like uh, currently we are in 2022 so whatever new data comes that will be loaded into 2022 uh, partition that means the separate page inside the sql server right so for the rest of the data unless they refresh with the entire table with the new data or unless something wrong with the existing data and they want to correct it so the rest of the years data or the rest of the partitions will not get affected so if you don't partition if you just simply randomly load the data what will happen is sql server or synapse in this case will try to store the data randomly there is no pattern they will not will follow whenever there is a block of uh, memory that is available or block of space is free sql server try to lo load the new data into that block so it is randomly distributed one kind of ordering the data is by creating the clustered index or non clustered index then they will definitely create try to index the data other part is by creating partitions so once you create partitions what will happen is the rest of the data or the rest of the years data that is older data will not get affected it will be stored as it is no changes no modifications whatever the new partitions are coming up or the new data is coming up for the current year only that data we need to manage so in case if you are creating trying to create a cluster index or you are trying to drop and recreate the existing indexes then they are all going to get affected on the new partition only that's the advantage with partition and the same concept is continued into the synapse dedicated pool or sql warehouse whatever we call it right so that is where partition table comes into picture right so all these three topics regular table temporary table partition table these three are standard they are just carry forwarded from on-premise sql server as it is into the new world dedicated sql book so what are the those other two things external tables and distributed tables so external table is something that you can reference the external data storage for example you have a uh, file you have a csv file that is stored in the storage location right so you know what is the structure of the csv file you know what exactly there in the sql csv file right for example how many columns are there what is the data type of each and every column okay and whether that file has header or not all those things if you are well aware of it you don't need to use any pipeline to load the data you can directly read the data from the csv file which is placed in the blob storage or data lake storage which is nothing but azure storage platform right so both of them together called as azure storage so if the file is located in the azure storage and you know what are the details about that file including header is there or not or the what is the schema like what is the column and data type as long as you are well aware of all those details right so you can directly create an external table and the external table will allow you to read the data from the table inside the data warehouse right so just like a 
physical table, you can write select star from the file path itself. You don't need to use a